Years ago, my daddy, I, I, I got to do this fast. So you're going to all, you all checked in? So my dad, before he was a Christian, was an atheist, wife beating, camel smoking, bourbon drinking, angry, two-fisted atheist who met Jesus. Only Jesus can change somebody. Who is that kind of person? I saw it. It was a real deal. Changed my life too. But I can remember that before he came to faith, he would look at people of faith and say, well, that's just a crutch for weak-willed people. But when he was by himself alone and he faced himself in the mirror of life, so to speak, he realized he couldn't overcome many problems, depression, purposelessness, lust, pride, anger and rage, all these things. He needed something else. And so he was desperate for God. So he not only needed God's eternal security, he needed God's help in the here and now. And so he began to study the promises of God, and he saw the power that comes through the blood of Jesus was made available not just for this, but for this. And so he started studying, and he started applying it in our family life. And so every time it seemed like some big decision or event or something I was getting ready to do, whether he knew what I was going to do or it was announced, my dad, it seemed uncanny. I can't tell you how many times this happened. I'll highlight a couple. He'd say, Derek, I want to pray for you. Come here, son. Okay, dad, coming in. Of course, it was always awkward because we had devotions in the morning. Some of you don't know what that means, but we were just having like morning time Bible reading and stuff. Before we went off to school, my dad did it every day of my life until I was like in middle school. That's incredible. Like, you never hear about that, ever. You think it might have something to do with my life? I, I think so. But anyway, while we're having devotions, the kids in the neighborhood liked me and my father and family, and they wanted to walk with me down to school, but really they, want, they wanted to sneak in on that experience. And so they would be down on the landing where my dad's speaking from the Word of God, a little extra loud for the listeners. <laughs> and so he said, before you go, son, I want to pray for you. I said, okay. And on top of the stairs, my friend's down there. I'm kind of like, oh, boy. He goes, he goes I, want, I want to pray for him. And he puts his hand on my head and his hand on my shoulder. And he says, Heavenly Father, cover my son with the precious blood of Jesus. I pray that you protect him from all evil. And may the promises and plans of God be fulfilled in his life in Jesus' name. And then he sent me off. And I walk off. I'm like, awkward. <laughs> Hi, guys. They look at me like, what was that? I'm like, ah, can we talk about it later? Anyway, <laughs> skip ahead years later. Don't know the effect of that. 17 years old, I get the greatest gift any son could ever get on his birthday. My dad gives me a new car. It wasn't a new car, but it was a used car. <laughs> he promoted it like it was a new car. But it was a 1979 Volkswagen Scirocco, black, premium sound, sport wheels, a little bit of fin on the back, five on the floor, because he taught me how to drive stick when I was like nine. And I'm so excited. I'm like, you're the greatest father in the world. Cool. You're going to be able to drive this to school. I was awesome. Go to bed that night. Couldn't sleep. Next day, wake up. I'm looking for the keys because I cannot. I want to be to school early for the first time in my entire life. <laughs> Can't find the keys. All of a sudden, I go to the kitchen, and I, can, I see them dangling his hand. I'm like, Dad, you're the greatest. And he goes, oh. he goes, wait a second. I go, Dad, have I told you how much I love you? And, I mean, who would do I mean, the insurance alone. I'm not going to be able to drive the car, am I? And he's like, no, no, I'm going to let you drive the car, but first I want to pray for you. Put his hand on my head. Put his hand on my shoulder. He said, Heavenly Father, cover Derek with the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you keep him from all evil, protect him from all evil and all harm. May no injury, accident, provocation come his way and fulfill your purposes in his life in Jesus' name. Whew, skip ahead. I'm 21 years old. I'm in college. I'm coming back to my dorm room. I'm a thousand miles away from my parents. I'm going because I want to get a message from some girls that I'm hoping to connect with later with a couple of guys. And we don't have the best plans that night, but it's going to be fun. Beep! Son, it's your father. I want to pray for you. <laughs> Put your hand on your head <laughs> and on your shoulder. <sighs> Heavenly Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over my son, and I pray that you keep him from all evil, protect him from all harm, from all ungodly choices, uh, 
And Lord, <laughs> fulfill your purposes in his life. In Jesus' name, amen. <sighs> Thanks, Dad, for ruining my night. <laughs> Skip ahead years later. I'm driving down Cedar Street in Ashland, and I'm thanking God. I'm just, you know, I'm on my sabbatical, and I'm having these moments with him. It was just so awesome. And I'm just like, God, why did I, how did I get this life? I don't deserve this life. How did this, how did this happen, you know, where I'd be in a situation where, you know, I had a lot of problems. I just, there's been difficulties. There's been challenges. But, like, you've always turned them out for good. You know, you, you did a work in our marriage. You've done a work in my kid's life. You, you've, you've, you've blessed our church. A lot, of people, a, lot, a lot of people give up, splits, problems, issues. Lord, you just blessed me. Uh, why, how have I been shielded from so many of these things? And in that moment, a still small voice came over me and said, because you had a praying father. Father, who understood the power that is in the Lamb of God and his shed blood for you, and he applied it to himself, and he applied it to you, and maybe that's why you're so blessed. Well, now, I have four kids, and I've learned a few things through that experience. And so when my kids were young. My son can testify to this. My girls at different times, I can't tell how many times over the younger years of their life, something be getting ready to happen, something be getting ready to go on. And I go, David, I want to pray for you. <laughs> and I'd lay my hands on my son and on his head and on his shoulder. And I'd say, Heavenly Father, I pronounce and plead the precious blood of Jesus over my son's life. Protect him from evil, keep him from all harm, help him to make godly choices, fulfill your purposes in his life. And he's living a purpose-filled life. This principle is like a genetic virus if you catch it. Because now I have grandchildren. <laughs> Just last night, I had my grandson by myself. I covet moments with my grandkids alone. And it's a study night, and, and I, 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 I'll sacrifice like food, you know, sleep, you know, best prime time to be with my grand. And I'm with my grandson, Zion, and we're watching the dumbest movie in the world. And he's just sitting in my lap, and I don't care about the movie. I just, you know, just love being with him. He's so sweet. He's actually rubbing my hand like this. He's rubbing my hand. And I put my hand on his head, and the Spirit of God just came over me, and I just said, Heavenly Father, I plead the precious blood of Jesus over my grandson, over his life. Protect him from all evil. Fulfill your purposes in his life. In Jesus' name.